Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you are all having a great day today. And the plane is just about to fly over my house, so that's gonna be fun. You might hear it, you might not. Um, anyway, I've got five, six, five, five things on the list today to talk about really quick. It's a Wednesday, and I feel like I've been go, 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 go all week so far, and I don't feel like I've got anything to show for it. It's just been one of those, one of those weird weeks, I guess. Um, I gotta physically get some stuff down, done. Most everything that I've done has been computer work, which just kind of, <laughs> you don't feel like you accomplished much getting computer work done. Um, uh, oh, I did get some stuff done. Anyway, uh, five things on the list for this video. I will be in Atlanta next month in February at the Kennesaw Rockler store Saturday, February 16th for a meet and greet from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then the following day, at the Sandy Springs Rockler store Sunday, February 17th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you're in the area, be sure to stop by. I'd love to uh, shake your hand and say thanks for watching these videos and thanks for watching me talk to a camera in my shop, I guess. Uh, anyway, just, just come out and uh, hang out and uh, talk shop for a little while and should be some fun fun conversations. Uh, it's always fun talking to everybody out there. Uh, so yeah, next month I will be in Atlanta for two days. It's the, if not mistaken, it's the weekend before Workbench Con, I think. I don't know, but anyway, I'm not going to Workbench Con, so that's the only thing I'm going to be doing in Atlanta uh, next month. Could be wrong on the Workbench Con thing. I know a lot of people have been asking me about it. Um, so if you're in the area, be sure to stop by. Next is my email newsletter. So during the holiday break, I switched my email uh, service, email newsletter service software that I, what is it called? Email server soft? Anyway, I, I switched the way that I send out my uh, website emails. I was using ConvertKit for a little more than a year to try out their service, but I realized that I'm just not using all of the features that I'm paying for. So instead of spending quite a bit to send out emails, I reverted back to my old system that I have that I used for several years um, prior to ConvertKit to save a tremendous amount of money and just make it a little bit more basic again. I'm, I'm just not using all the features of ConvertKit. So anytime that there's a switch in email providers as you're sending stuff out, um, your email system may see that as, as some type of trigger for spam or something. So um, if you are subscribed to my email newsletter list and you have not been receiving my emails in 2019, then be sure to add j at jcustomcreations.com to your address book or whitelist that email address. It's j at jcustomcreations.com. And hopefully the, my emails won't go to your spam folder. Uh, there's been a few people that uh, have been wondering why that they have gone to, to the spam folder. That being said, I haven't noticed any decrease in the statistics of people who actually open and click through the emails. So I know it's not a huge problem. But I just wanted to throw that out there. <coughs> oh, I hope I don't not get, I hope I'm not getting sick. <coughs> Excuse me. Next on the list is the dog gate. I just finished that one um, last week, I guess. And uh, <laughs> that's one of those projects that I'm so glad to have done. Uh, just like my apron here in my shop, it's one of those not you know, really thought about projects or items that gets used a tremendous amount of times. Uh, so it's between between my office and my dining room. So I walk through it six, seven, eight, nine, a dozen times a day and I interact with it. So having something that's convenient to go through rather than sliding this piece of plywood back, sliding it back in, into place. And then, uh, you know, I upgraded that to a piece of plywood that latched with a big, ugly wooden. Anyway, I'm glad to have it done. It looks good. I'm happy with the way that it looks. My wife is happy with the way that it looks. Um, it looks really good from the living room side uh, as far as keeping everything really nice. And uh, yeah, my dogs, uh, there's a common um, thought that my dogs are going to jump over it or they're going to scratch it all up. Um, I, my dogs are, are, are really obedient. And I think that has a lot to do with um, 
uh, I spent a lot of time with them trying to get them obedient and, and, and trained to be respectful. Uh, you know, guests coming in, I don't want my dogs jumping on people and they're not allowed to jump on the furniture. They're not allowed on the furniture at all. So they understand to stay on the ground. That's very simple. Um, and so far they haven't done anything to the gate and I really don't see it them doing much to it at all. Maybe a, maybe a random scratch or something here and there just because they are dogs. But the dogs are super respectful. I don't see anything happening to them, to the gate, and I sure, surely don't see them jumping over it. Uh, they, really, they know better than to uh, do something like that. So yeah, it, it turned out great. And I'm glad to have something nice in there too. I was getting, the, the whole goal with that office was to keep it basic, to keep it modern, to keep it simple just because, um, you know, they're dogs and there's always that possibility of something crazy happening, but it's also nice to make something nice. So that one's done. I think the office is, <laughs> I shouldn't say that the office is done. I should never say that. Next topic. <laughs> uh, oh, there's uh, a lot of people also suggested putting magnets on the, uh, the gate to hold it shut. It, there are spring-loaded hinges, and I have it set kind of loose. You know, there, there's not a lot of resistance on it because I don't want it to slam shut if I hold it open and forget about it and it wax or something. Um, so I, I have three lines of defense for keeping the, the gate shut. Number one is the hinges. I can always crank, up, crank it up a little bit more so that there's a little bit more pressure. Um, I know that my daughter is going to be walking in like, I don't know, six months or so, which is amazing and scary at the same time. So um, <laughs> if she starts pushing on it, which I know she will, at that point, I've got some really strong magnets and I was going to try the magnets, but then again, I don't want to be able to, I don't want to have to really pull back on some magnets to open it. Um, so there's, there's, there's room for magnets if I wanted to go that route. And there's also room to add a latch of some kind, all that in the future, because I'm not going to actually implement any of that unless it's actually needed, which, which it most likely will be. Um, so there's that. And I'm going to pause the video cause I got to sneeze. Okay. Um, something that I did do here in the shop and I, I was going to record it. Uh, making a router bit tray, but then I'm like, well, <laughs> just making holes. It's so basic. It's been done a million times before. So I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just get it done. This is my old router bit tray that a good friend of mine, Jeff Ferguson, if you're watching this, thanks again, Jeff, uh, made for me, made a couple of years ago. He made a couple of these and sent me one of these and, uh, it's been doing the job just fine but I outgrew it. So, and I've got a CNC machine, so why not make my own, right? Well, what I did is I put a piece of, a large piece of paper on my outfeed table, on my table saw and stacked up everything just the way that I want it and took some notes on the paper, took a couple pictures. So I had a reference, got everything off of that, took the paper inside, designed the entire thing in, um, in VCarve Pro and then uh, send it to the CNC machine and cut it. So what I came up with is this. It fits perfectly in the drawer of the CNC machine. And I've got a couple things that I don't want to fall out, but there you go. It's pretty cool, right? a lot of bits there um, I guess everyone ends up accumulating a lot of router bits and now that I've got uh, this CNC machine kicking butt in my shop uh, I've got a lot of CNC bits there are bits that I would you know specifically use in the CNC machine and not necessarily the router table um, but that is going to be really handy it actually is really handy to fit everything in one single tray, in one drawer, I'll have all of my bits in one location. And then also, I don't know where it's at. I, I got a couple of these, bear with me one second. These uh, silica gel packets that uh, pull the, the moisture out of the air. Uh, some larger ones that came with one of these tools. And I always keep these, you know, you get them in shoes, you get them in all kinds of things these days. Always keep these and just throw them in your toolbox. 
Um, I'm gonna put one of these in the back of the drawer and, and hopefully keep the moisture at bay inside the drawer. Um, so there's that. Some people asked me if I was gonna make a couple of those and sell them. Probably not. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, it's, it's a very boring, basic setup. And not only that, but that particular tray is specifically set up to the, the things that I have on hand. My wrenches, my collets, uh, my most used bits, all that stuff. So, I don't know, maybe if there's enough interest. I don't, I don't want to get into, like, production stuff. Um, that being said, a good friend of mine, uh, Jeremy, you guys know him, uh, he's about to get a CNC machine, and he does like to do some of that production stuff here and there. So um, follow him on Instagram, JP Woodworking. J Payne Woodworking? JP Woodworking? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but, but he might be interested in, in, in making a bunch of those if, if you guys are interested in wanting one. What else is on my list? i got to get going here. Um, let's see. The next project will be... Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. I've got a few options. Uh, the end grain inlay cutting boards. I need to finish those. These are up here. I've already got them halfway done. This is a big old maple end grain board. Ready to go. Ready to have a big old MSU, Mississippi State University logo in Babinga right in the middle of it. And then I've got some... Babinga smaller end grain Babinga boards that can have a maple Mississippi State logo in the middle of it. So I got to get those finished. Uh, they're not they're not a huge priority though, and I've already got the video recorded up to that point. Um, what else? Oh, uh, I know for sure. Next month is my nephew's birthday, and. Um, when he was here for Christmas, I asked him specifically, so what do you want for Christmas? And he said something, and I said, well, what do you want me to, what do you want me to make you for Christmas? And uh, instead of buying something, and he said something about Beyblades. I have no idea what Beyblades are. Well, I, I Googled them, and I know now, but I had, at the time I had no idea. But it's these, I guess these things that spin, it's a toy that spins, and they run into each other or something, and you have on like a little arena that they spin into each other in, I think. And uh, I, I'm probably going to make a, a arena of some kind that stacks with storage down below. I, I was drawing up, I don't have my notepad in here. I was drawing up some like, you know, rough sketches. And I was thinking of kind of like a shallow arena, very gradual dish all the way through it. And then having like, almost like a old castle, you know, like the, the I don't know what it's called, but like the top of a castle looking but have those out of dovetails and have that wrapping all the way around the arena um, just to add some type of weird interest as far as woodworking goes to the project um, but I haven't worked out all the details his birthday is next month so I'm probably gonna jump into that very soon I also have plans to get done to get done to do to make a yard marker sign for my house the out in the yard out by the end of the road into the driveway uh, to make a nice white post and then have a sign hanging with uh, my ad the you know address on it and I want to do that in such a way that everything's white but the sign that hangs is a Mississippi State University football jersey and then the jersey number is my house number because it's only two digit two digits so that'll work I think if I can get uh, the finish and the color that I want. We'll see. So there's a project there. I've already bought the 4x4 posts for that project and they're sitting in the shed away from one another with air going around them so they'll actually dry out because they're they're like a spaghetti noodle wetness. <laughs> Treated lumber. Uh, next up, I also have, I have to make the drawers for my coffee table finally. Uh, I made my coffee table six months, a year ago. I don't know when it was. Never made the drawers for it, uh, and I've had the ambrosia maple sitting in the shop ready to go since day one, so I need to get that done. And I have a bunch of Tool Talk videos scheduled that I just simply have not gotten off my butt and done, which is a Tool Talk on the hammer, jointer, planer, the bandsaw, the CNC machine, and the drum sander. Uh, those are common requests for Tool Talk to just uh, talk about the tools. So, I'm going to go load up on some cough drops, 
and some vitamin C and all that stuff. And I hope I'm not getting sick because if so, that means I'm going to have to avoid my little girl for a little while, unfortunately, and I don't want to do that. So you guys take care. Have a great day. And uh, if you're going to Atlanta, I'll see you in Atlanta. And if not, I'll probably see everyone before Atlanta. So see you later.